Hey friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. Thanks for being here today. I'm excited to show you this card. We'll get into why I'm making this card in a little bit, but I'm gonna use the two-tone floral stamp set and charming sentiment stamp set from Stampin' Up. And I'm using these masks from Stampin' Up. I cannot remember what they're called off the top of my head, but I'll make sure to link it in the video below. Below the video, there's a link for measurements and supplies. If you click that link, it's gonna take you over to my blog. On my blog, you'll find all of the supplies I use along with measurements for this card, which are really straightforward. There's really not a lot of mystery with the measurements here. And then um, I'll have photos of this card and some written out tips and info. So here I'm taking Azure Afternoon and I'm just ink blending right over my cardstock. I've taped the top and bottom with post-it note tape. You can find post-it note tape on Amazon. And the link in the description below the video, there's a link that says my Amazon store. And if you click that, it will take you over to all the things I use in my craft room that are non like that like Stampin' Up doesn't carry. For example, post-it note tape. So um, here I'm adding the second layer of this mask and I'm going to go ahead and do a lighter coat of the exact same color right over the top of it. And then I'm going to, and here I'm trying to decide like how I want this lined up exactly and make sure it is lined up how I want it and all of the things. So I'm gonna tape the top and the bottom and I'm gonna run my ink blending tool over it again. This is Stampin' Up's blending brushes. They are great, super handy, um, and they come in a pack of three. So if you need some ink blenders, you can grab them in my online store. There, I was getting a dog hair off of my mask because it just kept sticking and I do have dog hair occasionally stuck to me. So, I'm just doing my, more of my ink blending to get this really cool pattern. And you can see here's a tip, check your project before you lift it. Because especially with one like this, um, if you lift that up, you are done, like you're committed. So I just kind of peek first to make sure everything looks the way I want it to look. And then I pulled the entire mask off. Now here, um, I started with a basic white thick piece that was cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. And so here I am trimming it down to four by five and a quarter. And anytime I do ink blending on a whole piece like this, I really do like to trim down my edges just because sometimes your edges can be darker or some of the ink can kind of catch on the edge of the cardstock and just look funny. And so that's all I'm doing here. Okay, um, here I am stamping my all of my base flowers. So I'm stamping flowers in Lemon Lolly, um, Bubble Bath, and Berry Burst. And I thought all of those colors would go really pretty with the blue background. And then I'm going to stamp a bunch of leaves and then I'm gonna stamp with my second stamp for the flowers, which is what gives these flowers their definition. But then I have a trick for you. So um, one of the things that I've been working on learning how to do, at, many of you know, and I've talked about it pretty openly, that I am really expanding my wings creatively and trying to learn lots of new things, using some new products and stuff like that. Um, here I really struggled to figure out how to line this up, so ignore my head in, this, in the middle of the camera. Sorry about that. Um, I, I had the hardest time lining this up. I think partly because I had stamped in a dark color and then um, partly because it's when you are filming a video, the camera's directly over what you're doing. So it's really hard because you have to get directly over it to, to line everything up. So the purpose of these two-step stamps is adding dimension and for what I what I decided to do here is rather than adding a darker color, I'm just stamping in the same color on top of the image I've already stamped. And then I'm going in with Copic markers and I'm adding some ink blending. So you might say, well, why wouldn't you just use Stampin' Blends for this? Because you have colors that literally match the ink. You are right, I do. However, the only problem with that is they match the ink. <laughs> so I needed colors that were darker 
and deeper in tone than the Stampin' Blends because um, I wanted to get a little bit more of a dramatic effect. So here I just want to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I started with a Y18, I think is what this is, to put in all of my shadows. And it was it worked fine, except that I was a little confused on the direction of these of this flower. Now that I'm looking at the flower on the video, like not coloring it, and I'm looking at it on the video, I can totally see where I went wrong. And I'm going to point it out to you. So the this petal right here is where I went wrong. I could not tell. Again, this is about angles. I could not tell that this was one big petal going up. Now that I am looking at it, I can see that that was one solid petal. So my yellow flowers got a little convoluted with this technique, but the pink flower and the berry burst flower came out fantastic. So I didn't cut this part out of the video and I didn't make the choice to do anything more because two things. One, I wanted to show you my novice abilities. I didn't really know how to fix this. So what I do is I end up going into the second flower and here we are going to speed it up here in just a second. Um, but I kept it at regular speed for a little bit for you so that you could see how long it would take to color each of these. So here I'm blending out to a Y15 and then I realize like, you know, this just isn't coming together quite like I expected it to. And so I'm trying to kind of fix it. And then I'm like, what should I do? Okay, maybe if I go in with a little bit darker color to give a little more definition. Truthfully, it just made it worse. So that is simply my inexperience of not knowing exactly how to fix this and not understanding exactly which direction the artist intended the flower to go. And you can see me picking up the paper there and being like, which, which direction do these petals go? Like I was just kind of confused on this particular flower. Um, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's why I showed you this because I want you to understand that like if you're expanding your creativity and trying to learn new things, you're going to have mistakes and you're going to have failures and you're going to have moments of like, I don't really know what I did here. And that was the case with this flower in particular. I kind of was like, meh, it didn't turn out great, but I'm not going to not use it. I'm just going to go with it and it'll be fine because it's going to be in a grouping of other flowers, whatever. <laughs> so here, I cannot tell you the number of markers I used because I did not, I think it's an R25 or 23. So here I am going in. This flower was much easier to do this technique with. Um, going back to the lemon lolly flower really quick. It probably would have been easier had I stamped with a darker color. Let me say that. I don't have the best eyesight. And so probably part of my problem was that I stamped in that lemon lolly and it's a really light color, which then makes it hard to kind of see what you're doing. So there's my pink flower. I used two markers for that. And for this little um, berry burst flower, I'm just using one marker. Um, and you can see how I took my cap off the other side. That's because anytime you're using alcohol markers, if they start bleeding on you from the tip, it's because they're like, they need air. So you have to pull the cap off the other side. So just FYI on that. So here for all of the leaves, I went in with uh, YG17 and I colored the bottoms of the leaves and the vines to give them a little bit of extra something something. And you can see how easy that was and how much it steps up the look of those leaves. It's such a cool and fun technique. Uh, highly recommend it. Highly recommend. <laughs> so I only colored one of each of the flowers and I colored all the leaves just because I ended up thinking, you know what, I'm not probably going to use all those flowers. Um, and I didn't want to spend the time coloring them all. This card took me a full hour start to finish. 
Um, obviously here in the video you're seeing it sped up and I've cut a little bit parts out here and there that were just me not doing much of anything like you know grabbing other supplies and stuff so you're seeing it condensed down to 20 minutes but this this card took me one hour fully from start to finish and I know this because I got a phone call from my daughter at 2 p.m. that she was ready for me to come pick her up from the barn and I said, I, I'll do it when I finish this card. And at 3.05 p.m., I finished the card and I left to go get her. So that's how I know that this took me a whole hour. <laughs> so as I die cut these and get this card assembled, I have a couple more tips and tricks to show you. But we're going to have some story time because that's what we do on Saturdays. And I know that things have been a little hectic lately and, you know, kind of off kilter for me with my sharing and that's just because it's summertime and busy and we've been over all of that and my kid has pigs and a horse and we all have busy lives right so um here i'm going to arrange all of the pieces the way i want them and then i'm going to use the hinge technique with my uh press and seal so you'll see me do that and that is just where you do a big enough piece of press and seal that you can like adhere it to the countertop and then um you can peel it back put glue put it back down put glue on the next layers put it down so on and so forth so as I go here you can see I'm holding down bits and pieces because I don't want them to shift and move on me and then I am going to do that technique and get this all glued in place. So um, why am I making this card? Who am I making it for? So my, I have a good friend by the name of Janelle who I've known since I was 13 years old. And you'll notice that's a theme with me. Most of my friends I've had for like 20 plus years. I, yeah, if, if you're in the, good friend category it's I've probably known you a long time so anyway I um am adhering these down and then pulling it up so why am I making this card so my friend Janelle like I was saying we've known each other since I was 13 when she was 19 I think she was 19 or 20 she had her first daughter and um I was very young still at the time I think I was 17 16 17 somewhere in there 17 I think when she had her first child and I'm just really close to this young lady she's now in her 20s mid 20s and she is getting married I cannot believe <laughs> I cannot believe that I have a friend whose child that I watched grow up is getting married this doesn't seem possible because i don't feel old enough to have this happening to me like how is this happening i how am i old enough to have this happen so ashley's getting married to tyler in august and she's having a bridal shower tomorrow actually when you're watching this when you're watching it is happening um well, not if you're watching at 5 a.m., but on Saturday, she's having a bridal shower. And the person organizing it is a friend of hers. And I have to say, I don't really know the lady. I've only met her once, but she's a little disorganized. Like, I just got an invitation maybe a week ago, a week and a half ago. And then I was asked to bring a dessert. And I'm quoting, a dessert thinking that that meant I was contributing to the desserts. <laughs> and then today, my friend Janelle is like, so apparently you're the one making all the desserts. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. It's totally fine. I don't care. I'm super glad she let me know because it would have been super embarrassing to show up and have enough stuff for like half the people. So here, really quick, back to the card. I got everything glued down. You saw how I was doing the hinge technique. It's like a little door that just opens and closes. And then I end up stamping the sentiment in black first. And then I didn't like it. 
So I then stamped it again, and I thought I was going to heat emboss, and I changed my mind. So then I end up stamping it again in Azure Afternoon, and that's the one I end up using. But again, I left it in because I was like, I want you to see some of the process I go through so that you know that it's normal. Everybody goes through those processes. So anyway, um, I made today, so I keep saying today, I'm recording this video on Friday, okay? So I made a pound cake that's beautiful out of um, a rose, Nordic Ware rose mold I have, which makes everything look just so spectacular. So I made that and then I made a new dessert and I was a little nervous, but I did it. I was super proud of myself. I made a, are you ready for this? A key lime white chocolate mousse cake. Can you even with that? So it, the process of making this was really interesting. You start by making a graham cracker crust and putting it in the refrigerator. Then you whip, let me, let me think of all the process. Okay. Then you whip cream cheese and sugar together. Oh, but first you have to mix lemon zest into the sugar and let it sit and like kind of mush it around. And then you mix that sugar with the lemon zest or lime zest, lime, not lemon. You mix that in with the whipped cream. Okay. Or not whipped cream. My good Lord, cream cheese. Then Separate from that, in a saucepan, you melt white chocolate and a half a cup of whipping cream. And you mix it together until it melts. In the meantime, you've taken six tablespoons of lime juice and mixed a packet of gelatin into it and let it sit. So when all your stuff is done melting, your chocolate's done melting, then you mix the gelatin mixture into the white chocolate mixture. Okay, you tracking, but it's got to be cool first. You got to let everything cool. So I put everything in, let it cool, blah, blah, blah. Then you take that mixture and you mix it into the cream cheese mixture. Get that all mixed. Then you take two cups plus a half a cup of sugar plus vanilla of, what? Well, sorry, two cups of heavy cream, half a cup of sugar, regular old sugar, and some vanilla and you whip that until it becomes whipped cream. And then you fold that into the other batter that you've made. And you put all of that into the graham cracker crust and you freeze it overnight. Is that, does that not sound like the most delicious thing ever? I guess if you don't like lime and you don't like white chocolate, you won't like it. But tomorrow on our way to the, baby, the bridal shower, also, P.S., I've called it a baby shower 15,000 times. On my way to the bridal shower, I'm going to stop at a store to get a bar of white chocolate. So, and I'm going to take my um, like carrot grater thing, you know, that you just hold in your hand. And take that with me so that when I get there, I can do the white chocolate like swirly things on top of the cake. Because that's what you're supposed to do. But I live in podunk nowhere, and when I went to the little general store that's next door to me, uh, zero white chocolate bars. Thank you very much for living in podunk. That's what happens. Okay, so here, back to the card, I really was struggling to figure out what embellishment to put on this, but you know I got to put some bling. So I went through them all, trying to figure them out. Uh, FYI, these little Avery pockets to hold embellishments are amazing. Got them on Amazon. Got the idea from Patty, my upline. And apparently Julie D'Amadio also does it. Anyways, I feel this overwhelming sense or need to like give credit if I didn't come up with the idea and then I'm sharing it. <laughs> so anyway, that's why every time I use these in my embellishments now and talk about the Avery pockets that I'm have them in, I tell you who made them or who had the idea. Anyway, I digress. Back to the dessert. The really important thing is the dessert in this conversation. So it's in the freezer now. I tasted each element of the dessert individually. Like I took a small bite of the whipped cream. I took a small bite of the gelatin mixture. I took a small bite of the cream cheese mixture all separate and they all tasted phenomenal. So I'm assuming this is gonna taste phenomenal. 
and be amazing. I am a little concerned. And if you comment early enough, I will see your comment. So let me know in the comments below. It's a freezer cake, but if I take it out of the freezer and drive for 40 minutes till I get to the event, is it gonna be okay? Or do I need to put it in a nice chest? Let me know. All right, shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com if you want any of these products. Leave me a comment below this video. I love interacting with you and hearing from you. And I will catch you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.